So there, there is a little bit of irony in, in um, Brian's, Brian's words and introduction, and hopefully you, you caught it, um, that there's this short window of time to get uh, distributed, decentralized um, technology in place before some central monolithic company arises and dominates an industry, and then he introduces the central monolithic company that dominates an industry and uh, as, as the chairman of the board. Uh, so I have just a couple of comments um, uh, really from the, from the board. Uh, first, it was really, it was just over four years ago. It was the end of January 2016, uh, and my company, DTCC, hosted the very first Hyperledger meetup just one month after Hyperledger was founded uh, in our, our small uh, conference room, training room, uh, in our Jersey City office outside of New York. Uh, and, and Consensus was there, and Microsoft was there, and a lot of companies that weren't really sure. I think everyone was just kind of warily eyeing each other because everyone had, had an idea of what this, this might become, uh, but wanted to see what the other eye was doing and what the other guy was going to contribute. And today, Super Tuesday, ironically named March 3rd, 2020, just 48 months, uh, which seems short in, in distributed ledger terms, but probably very long in political terms. Uh, we have 15 different projects, hundreds of contributors, many participating companies, thousands of downloads, applications going live, and companies like, like Walmart joining us every single day. Um, so the amount of accomplishment is really, really tremendous. In my few minutes, I just want to touch on three points. First, something I'm often asked, and maybe is a question on many of your heads, uh, uh, why do we have a governing board, and what exactly do we do? Two, DTC, who is DTCC, and why am I here? And three, uh, that message from the board. So any community is really only as strong as its governance. Our responsibility is to make sure that the Hyperledger community is focused and bringing the desired benefits and outcomes to this community. We oversee the strategy, we oversee the policies, the procedures, the rules to let this open source community fl flourish. We oversee the budget, we oversee marketing, uh, we oversee the formation of, of special interest groups and, and all of the um, different parts of a business that let a business run. Uh, open source is a very interesting type of community. Uh, there are some in my company and probably in some of your companies, if you work in enterprises, that think open source is just a bunch of people getting together and writing code, and the magic happens in terms of making sure there's a code repository, and in terms of only releases get out when they're ready for prime time, and that there's a pipeline. All that magic has to happen with some oversight and with some governance, and that's what our function is. Our real obligation is to you, is to our community, and to make sure that we're listening to everything that you want, that everything that's going on in Hyperledger is to benefit you and to achieve the desired outcomes that you are looking for. And if it needs to be adjusted or it needs to be you know, course corrected, that we are the ones that can bring that kind of, 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 of turn but only if the community speaks up. And to the extent the community needs more resources, it needs more energy put into a particular direction, that is our responsibility. And our responsibility is to make sure that we're all, when we come into that governing board meeting, checking our enterprise hats at the door and operating at the, to the benefit of the open source community. The motivation for people to contribute to open source and to use open source is very different than in commercial products and for profit. So all of us need to take this different mindset uh, in terms of what it looks like and figure out what are the ways we could make Hyperledger the distributed ledger open source environment of choice. Our perspective on Hyperledger, and certainly DTCC's perspective, is that a distributed, decentralized uh, ecosystem, technology, platform can't be owned by a particular commercial vendor. It needs to have at its core, similar to the internet, similar to SQL standards, similar to many other technologies, there needs to be a fundamental shared level of resource. 
uh, and making sure that that sharing and all of the right components are being put in the right order, and those are the projects that we're working on, is what we're focused on. DTCC itself, we're not a vendor. We're not offering software. Uh, we're not selling product. We're owned by the financial industry. We provide financial industry infrastructure for clearance and settlement and asset servicing. We provide a variety of services around the world to report to regulators. So we're very regulated. We're, uh, we're, we're very beholden to the community and regulators around the world. Uh, we have very high requirements for resilience, for uh, security. And when we look at the distributed ledger technology model, we see something that improves fundamentally how transactions are stored and how data is stored. It fundamentally adds security. It adds privacy. It builds it all in, and it creates a resilient and, and validated model that is orders of magnitude better than what exists today. So we don't see it as a threat. We actually see it as an enabler. And we see our responsibility as DTCC as providing oversight and governance and risk management for the financial industry. Uh, our responsibility is not to uh, run a giant mainframe that is a central ledger. Our responsibility is to make sure that markets operate with complete safety and soundness. And the beauty of distributed ledger and the beauty of hyperledger, it is, a, it is enabling a new and better model for exactly that. So lastly, um, the message from the governing board. Uh, the message from the governing board is that we're amazingly proud of the progress that we've made in the last four years, just 48 months. All the noise everyone's hearing, people reevaluating use cases, people taking a fresh look at how this technology and suddenly realizing, duh, it's not a hammer and every problem is not a nail, that there are specific opportunities and specific uses and exact purposes to this. It's not a distributed reporting system. It's a distributed ledger, okay, and it got and it has all of the capabilities built in to create that trust but verify capability where you can have immutability, you can have auditability, accountability, all of it built in from the get-go, and you don't need to constantly reconcile across multiple different sources of truth. So we're tremendously proud. What you're hearing is the noise of progress. Every technology goes through different learning curves. Every technology goes through the aha moment when you actually put it in production and you realize, oh, it's not connected to my operation console, or the word out of gas is not really going to help me when I'm trying to debug something. So everything you're hearing is exactly where we sh what you should be hearing. All the progress that we've made is exactly the progress we, we should be making at this point in the evolution of a technology that is likely to be dominant over the next five to 10 years. Um, so the key thing is go out, listen to the noise of progress, see all the different things that, that people are doing, think about ways that you can contribute and you can enhance the value of this ecosystem. Think about any messages you might want to have for the board. Uh, engage us. There are a number of us walking uh, around that are going to be involved uh, throughout the week and available. Um, there's about, I think, uh, 16 or 17 members of, of the governing board, uh, and a number of them are, are here. Uh, and get involved and have fun. Thank you very much.